My name is Robin Chodak, and I am glad that I get this opportunity to interview someone every week. And actually, that was, you just had a clip of Rhonda. I didn't intend to have her on quite yet, but she is our guest today. And Rhonda is a best-selling author of the book, Life Directions, and she is a transformational coach. And Rhonda has started her own company in 2013 called A Balanced Life for You. And I really love her, her title, Life Directions. It made me chuckle because my husband always says to me that, you know, that's the worst thing. I, I don't know where I'm going. When we travel, I walk out of the hotel room, I go in the wrong direction. <laughs> But he says that I have other redemptive qualities, thankfully. So it just made me laugh because Rhonda's book, Life Directions, is something that we all need. I need a particular GPS system when I'm traveling, but I know that Rhonda has a lot of great things that she is going to teach us today. So with that, I will bring Rhonda on. Hello, Rhonda. Hey, Robin. Good morning or afternoon. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. And actually, I don't know if I told the viewers your name, your name, your last name is Cimarelli. That's right. Yes. Yes. So we have Rhonda Cimarelli. And like I said, your book is called Life Directions. Yes, it and is. Me, how did you, it's just a, it's a interesting title. How did you come up with that title? Oh, uh, that's a really good question. And I think part of it was the last few years I've gone through such a personal transformation for myself and reinvention of myself. And I attended so many uh, personal development and training courses. One of them in particular was tight, partially titled about life and directions. And it made me think about, you know, the direction I've been in and where I'm going and it just it just made sense because a balanced life for you is a it's almost like an umbrella, if you will. And I take a very holistic approach, realizing that we are here in the physical, yet it really pertains to our mental, our emotional, and our spiritual well-being. And the the story of life directions encompasses a lot about uh, my life and where I've been and some of the challenges that I've had. And through the book, it I share, uh, you know, different experiences. And when I uh, bring all of them into one pot, that's how I came up with my dream system. So the dream system isn't necessarily an A, B, C, one, two, three. However, there are some uh, steps with action. And then they complement things like principles that I believe that are really important in my life. And when I look around into the world, I, I really believe that, excuse me, if we apply these principles with these action steps, we can take our life in a completely new direction. And as I said, I like to use it for the GPS. I love that. Yes. Well, and you know, Rhonda, I love, I just love the word direction because, you know, you really have to have a, a plan on where you're going, right? So, you know, I always want to get outside of the hotel soon as I'm in a room, I want to get out and exit. But for some reason, I just go the wrong way. <laughs> so I need, I need a little direction. I need, a, you know, like an arrow pointing me or, uh, you know, my husband mm -hmm. kind of helping me. So in that respect, it's really, it, it, it's, a, it's a metaphor because we all need a, a, a direction, right? And it's a guiding system, as, as you said. Yeah, we really do need a clear direction. And I talk about this in even my programs. I'm glad you brought that up because, yes, we need a direction. We also need to really understand, where am I? Are you in the hotel room trying to get outside? Are you outside <laughs> trying to find your hotel room? So it's really important for us to really become aware and identify where we are today. You know, where I've always been, uh, I've been programmed for years and years about point A, point B point A, point B. And those are really great. So we want to get from point A to point B. However, if your point B happens to be outside that hotel room, you darn well better know where you're starting. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Um, what levels are you excited about in your point A? 
what levels, what areas are you very frustrated with or particularly maybe even annoyed at point A? Because if you can't identify point A, it's going to be very difficult to follow those directions <laughs> to get to your point B. Sure, sure. And yeah, and it's true. It's, it's like we do have to have, in, in a sense, it's, you have to have a plan before you can get to your direction, right? Right, absolutely. I like, I like what you said. And in addition to that, it's that point A. You have to discover, okay, where are you right now? And where do you want to go, right? Exactly. And as we're moving forward in our direction, you know, going back to the Life Directions book, in alphabetical order, my Ds are very important. There's dare. And dare is, in my opinion, huge. It means get uncomfortable. Try something new. Because if we continue to think, act, and behave the same way that we did yesterday and the day before, which, by the way, 80% of what we do today, we thought about yesterday. So most of us are on this insanity wheel. You know, we think that we're going to go get something different in life or have better results or, you know, transform our lives, but yet we're not willing to get uncomfortable. So my challenge to everybody is I dare you, I dare you to do something different. I dare you to have a different thought. I dare you to have a new perspective on where you're at and where you're going. So that's the first part of my D. Yeah. And, you know, that's, I, I think that's a very, very large part of the D because, you know, it's often those fears that keep us from trying something new, from, from, as you say, daring, it's a daring, dare, dare to do it. I don't even like to say the word try mm -hmm. because in my mind, try is, it's, it's almost a cop out. Yeah. So it's better to say, do it, dare to do it. Right. Exactly. And that's huge. And that's your first letter. I love that. That's your first letter, right? <laughs> dare is, yeah, dare is part, the first letter of the dream. Now, there are some complementing words, which kind of go along with what we're talking about, is design, right? We're talking about finding that direction, right? The, that path. So when you're designing, let's think about being creative. And that could be... Um, all right, if you're in your hotel room, I love this analogy, you're in your hotel room, there are 20 different ways to get to that main floor, right? You can take this elevator, you can take that elevator, you can take that set of stairs, you can take the elevator stairs elevator. I mean, there's a million combinations that you could do to get from the fifth floor down to the main floor, right? So when we're designing our new life, our new goals and dreams, again, I'm going to dare you to think outside the box. Right. Design, make a new design for yourself. And remember, it just because somebody else has an opinion about where you should be going or how you should be doing it, this is going to be really important to you. And I'm a big advocate for uh, particularly women finding their voice so that they can design their own life and without that guilt or regret. Yes, yes. And yeah, actually, I know that, Rhonda, that you do most of your work is empowering women, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, that's great. We actually have someone joining us. Um, we have Gloria. Hello, Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Robin. I have, I love your interviews. Always great guests. Well, Gloria, I agree with you. I, we always have wonderful guests because all of the guests that I am interviewing, they're from Transformation TV. So it's important for those watching us now, we are on Facebook Live, but if you go to www.transformation.tv, you'll see all the teachers. And Rhonda is up there and you can click on Rhonda's um, free teaching segment and learn more about Rhonda and her, her dream segment. So I just wanted to say thank you, Gloria. And we have Nellie, Nellie Greer watching as well. Thank you. So we do have some watch some Hi. viewers today. Yeah, so that's well. Great. That's great. So yes, um, so Rhonda, let's just, you know, talk about, um, you know, another, well, I know you have more um, acronyms for a dream, right? Yes. Okay. So, you know, we, we have the D for dare. I dare you to do something different and step out of your comfort zone, make a design. And then we want to have, um, we want to have some direction and we want to have some determination, right? Because without determination, determination is really that commitment. And, you know, commitment versus interest. How many times 
have you yourself or do you know people who say, oh, I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes they'll say the word do um, a new project or they're going to attempt uh, a new sport or whatever it is. And they have a new goal. And what happens is they're really just more interested in doing this because when challenges arrive, they kind of fall off the wagon, right? So we have to have some determination. And then of course, you've got to get up there and actually do, right? Uh, <laughs> like you said, the action words do. And we, I can tell you how many people I've talked to over the last many, many years, probably 30 years at this point, who set goals and they're so gung-ho, they, but they think about it. I used to coach a woman years ago and we would have great sessions and she'd say, yes, I have an aha moment. And I'd say, great, what are you gonna, you know, what's your next steps? She goes, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about this. And every time she would think about this, and she finally realized she has a fear of getting into the action. So those are, those are the primary parts of it. Sure. Oh, I just, oh, I just oh, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay, we just lost each other for a moment. And yeah, that's, you know, that's the great thing about coaching. I love coaching uh, individuals. I mean, it's it's wonderful. I know you, we can give seminars and, you know, we can do workshops. But when you work with someone one-on-one -on -one and you see their transformation, it is absolutely amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It is. And to me, it's, uh, I love the analogy of, because I work with women primarily, and I, I, I like to think of them as, nature you know we're beautiful flowers and we're meant to fully blossom so oftentimes when you think about flowers and plants they need a few things they need water sunlight nurturing fertilizer and without any of the above your flower can wither right it won't necessarily die right away but it will wither so when i work with women particularly one-on-one -on -one, i i find them coming to me in that state of withering because their life is so out of control. It's chaotic. They haven't had the support. They don't have the self-confidence anymore. And when we're done with our coaching program, I watch them blossom into this beautiful flower that they're meant to be. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, I love it. It just gives me goosebumps every time I think about it. Sure, sure. That's beautiful. And I, I just want to make a little plug in for, you know, what, you're doing what I'm doing, what all of us are doing yeah. on Transformation TV, because you know they can get the one-on-one -on -one coaching with our boot camp, right? You know, and, and it's so great. So I always want to make mention of that, just so the viewers know to go to the website and and they can learn more about all the teachers and you know particularly your dream method because it's a transformational program, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the teaching segments, I love all of our teachers and I enjoy watching everybody and learning from everyone because we are all doing the same thing. We are, our goal and mission is to really enrich and empower and change lives in a positive direction. So I personally even love watching everybody's shows. So, and, and the boot camps are fantastic because you can try them out and just see how it feels. Try, right. try size, right? <laughs> Yes, exactly, exactly. So, you know, I want to go in a little deeper into your dream method because my goal always when I do these interviews is I want to really let the the viewers, you know, have something that they can, let's just say, chew on yeah. you know, and take with them and make them think. And the two things you've already, the three Ds you've already mentioned are great. And I don't know, do you have, a, is there a few more of those Ds? Well, let, me, let me just review. We have D.A.R.E. We have decide. We were talking about that earlier. You got to figure out where point A is and point B. Then we design, and then we have determination, and then do. So those are the five points of D. The next part of the dream, uh, again, depending on where the person is, there's some principles there, and the principle is to take responsibility. Oh, this one is really hard for people. This was hard for me at one point. Taking responsibility for <laughs> how do you determine your direction. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Thank you, Rhonda. You're great. We can, we, Kate, we'll say hello to Kate. Thank you for joining us. But 
you know, she, maybe you can just uh, address that briefly. How do you determine? I think she missed the beginning okay. where you talked about the A and B. Well, the best way to de determine your direction, uh, I'm going to walk you through something that I take my clients through. And it's a process where um, we bring them into a state of peace and quiet. Now, I, kind of, I don't really love that word meditation, but meditation is essentially being present in the moment where you can see, feel, hear, breathe. You, 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 you're totally here, okay? And you don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to do the chanting. But I want you to kind of take a moment, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. And very important, put your hand over your heart and take a few deep breaths. Now, in the beginning, I mentioned that I take a holistic approach. So I'm not gonna walk you through everything, Kate, but I'm gonna encourage you to put your hand over your heart, close your eyes and take a few deep breaths and ask yourself quietly, what is it that I want? And I'm gonna suggest that you pick one specific area of your life. Is, are you struggling with your health, with your fitness, with the relationship, with your job, uh, with your spiritual connection? What is it that you're struggling with the most? Pick one area only. All right, close your eyes quietly and ask myself, what do I want? The key to this is to remember, it's about you. It's not about your husband, your parents, your siblings, your children. This is about you. What do I want? Okay, kind of like the oxygen. You have to put your own oxygen mask on first before you can help others. All right, so ask yourself, what do I want? And then we can walk through, when you watch the segment um, and the show, the interview today, you'll learn a little bit more on the steps on how to do that. Is that helpful? Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah, that was great. That was great, Rhonda. I'm sure she's very grateful that you, you walked her through that. And, you know, it's a good exercise for us all to do, you know, just a reminder, you know, it's, it's, it's about being silent and being present and, I really loved what you said about the oxygen mask. <laughs> You're right. I mean, that's my message too. You know, you can't, you have to take care of yourself and love yourself mm -hmm. or you can help others. And it's that, that oxygen mask is so true. And that's your message. That's what you're saying as well. So I'm sure Kate is, is grateful for that. So that's great. So, um, so I'm, we'll just continue and we get some more comments because this is what we want to do. <laughs> we want to address the comments. Okay. Well, again, going back to the R and taking responsibility, this is, um, a challenge and a principle for so many of us. Many of us find it so easy to take responsibility for the things that went right. You know, so if my life is going right and I made a good decision, Yes, pat on the back, good for me, I'll take that recognition. However, when we make a bad decision, or we go down the wrong path, or we go in the wrong direction, and things snowball, it's so easy for us to get on that blame train and play the victim. It's not my fault. You know, you made me do it. You made me feel that way. You know, you made me whatever, blah, 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 blah. So to take responsibility, get off the blame train, okay? Stop playing the victim. Take a deep breath. The company I used to be in used to say, put your big girl undies on, <laughs> put them on and wear them, okay? And own it, just own it. If you make a bad mistake, make a bad direction, take a wrong turn in Albuquerque, it's okay. The point is learn from what you did not right and figure out what I can change or improve. Going back to that D again, right? Because chances are these decisions that you've been making are based on um, experiences and habits that we've had from yesterday and last week and five years ago. So take responsibility. It's a huge principle. Yeah. Now, when I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I, I add a little bit in there because it's difficult to teach somebody this without going through a program like the boot camp or to work uh, with them personally. Well, part of it is we have to release those fears. We have to release the inhibitions. We have to release those negative habits. And we, you know, some of us, it's really difficult to um, identify them. So the release part might be a little challenging on your own. Uh, some of us can figure it out by ourselves. But if you can take responsibility, that's a huge step. Sure. 
And that's why, you know, people go to coaches like ourselves. Mm -hmm. because it, it, and it's not a sign of weakness. Okay. No. It's a sign of just really wanting to get to the next level in your life. And also knowing that, yeah, there, there are some things that I know I, I can change. And there's some things I know I can do better in my life. And see, once they have that awakening, mm -hmm. then, you know, that's when they'll reach out for help. And I know that from my own experience as well. Right, Robin. I, I, I love what you said there, because some of us, we can do part of it by ourselves. And the reason to go to a coach is somebody who can guide you and support you. Because here's my theory. I've worked with coaches for years. And the fact is, if you could have gotten there by yourself, you'd already be there. <laughs> I like that. I like that, Rhonda. That's good. <laughs> You'd already be there and you'd be happy and you'd have fulfillment and you'd have no guilt, no regret, right? right. So if you are not living that way fully, I'm thinking either get up and take the action that you say you're going to do, take responsibility, or get up and go find somebody who resonates with you, somebody who you feel that you can talk to and work with. And, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm not the end all be all. Man, I got a whole platform of people um, that are wonderful. So if you don't resonate, if I don't resonate with you and my message, go find Robin or go find one of the other teachers because we are here to support you. Exactly. And that's, and that's beautiful. And that's what, the way we all feel. I feel exactly the same as you, Rhonda. And I know that, you know, today people are watching and they're resonating with you. I mean, you're answering their questions. You're, you're helping them at this very moment. And I love that. Um, but I, I, I remember when I was watching your segment, I loved your segment, by the way. Thanks. And, you know, I, I did like it, it just really stuck with me when you were talking about blame, because we it's so important not to blame ourselves. But also you said, you know, we can't be blaming others. Mm -hmm. And you talked about that being a victim. And I don't know if you had gone through your own experience. But I think that's a really important point to make. It's not only ourselves we blame. Right. We blame ourselves, but we also push the blame onto others. Right. Because that's really easy. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, most of us prefer easy, not hard. <laughs> you know? Right. And, you know, you said that you've gone through some challenges too. And I too had years. And I talk about this in my book in the segment. Uh, when I was 17 years old, a senior in high school, it was right after my couple weeks after my birthday. And, uh, you know, as teenagers do, my sister and I decided, Hey, we, got in a fight with our parents that day and we said I don't want to go to school I don't know if anybody else has ever done that <laughs> but what we did was uh, you know we went for a ride she had a boyfriend somewhere else and we went to go see them well as you know boyfriend girlfriend like to be alone uh, his friend and I decided to go for a ride and that ride turned out to be uh, a particular day that changed my life I was in a severe car auto or auto accident and the car, or it was a truck, we hit a tree and knocked both of us out. When I woke up, there were flames everywhere. Uh, the driver was knocked unconscious, couldn't get out the door, couldn't see. Um, you know, I managed to crawl out of the truck, couldn't walk because I couldn't see, had a broken leg, broken arm. Ended up being transported to a couple of different hospitals. And what had ended up happening was I had massive facial injuries. I crushed my whole face, everything from here up. After many reconstructions, uh, at one time I woke up after in the hospital with my nose packed. I had buttons on my nose. My mouth was wired shut and I had a tracheotomy at 17. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge wake up call for me. And for years, I mean, years and years and years, I blamed that person for pretty much ruining my life. And how, although I was a victim, because I was a passenger, there was, there's a sense of victimization here because I wasn't driving, I had no control. But when I really owned it, here's what I, the message I'm really just trying to get over to everybody. When I owned that day, I made the decision to go somewhere I wasn't supposed to be. And because I made that decision, everything snowballed. 
Sure. Right? Wow. <laughs> Rhonda, thank you for, for sharing that story. It's it's a tragic, painful story, but you know what? We're we're glad you're here. And because of that, it's you know, led to your transformation. And and I love that what you said. It's just it's amazing, but it's 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 what's needed, right? Because if you didn't come to that place in your life, you wouldn't be able to be where you are now and do what you do and help others. Right. And I believe that to be a huge asset to know that, you know, I've experienced, uh, you know, tragic physical pain, mental and emotional pain, which we're not going to get into, but I've been there. <laughs> I've yeah. been there, done that. And because of the work I've done with myself, the work I've done with my coaches, I'm in a place now where I'm great. And I want you to be in the same place. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Rhonda, for sharing that. We really appreciate <laughs> that, that honesty and everything you shared. But can we talk, because um, this is so exciting, the stream method. I know, you know, we can't get through it all. And, you know, we want to let the viewers get your book and <laughs> get your boot camp. But let, what, let's talk about a few more things that you <laughs> think would be very useful for okay. them. I don't know if you want to go. We actually, I thought it was quite interesting. You said, because you don't have to go in sequence. And normal, normally, a lot of people, you know, make their steps in sequence. And I love that you said that in yours. You said you don't really have to go in sequence of the dream method. So that's very interesting. I like that. Thank you. And it, it is different <laughs> because most people do have an A, B, C, one, two, three. But the reason why I don't put it in a step by step order is because each and every one of us are in a different place in our life. You've done certain work on yourself. Maybe you've already worked with a coach. Maybe you're so lost and challenged that you don't know where to start. So we have to really, again, identify where is point A. And when I can help you identify where is point A, you know, I can help set you on the guidance of which steps need to come next. Because uh, we want to work with harmony and balance in our lives. We want to work with the values that are true to ourselves. So really quickly, because I, I don't, I, I know we're kind of getting tight on time, but the, um, the E, I love to focus two areas on E, and that is your environment as well as education. So I'll explain both of those pretty simply. Your environment is stronger than your willpower. 99.9% .9 of the time. Oh my gosh. I'm just have to interrupt just for one second. Yep. And I'm going to let you go. But that is talk about energies connecting Rhonda. Oh my gosh. That was the one thing I was going to make sure we talked about before we ended. I mean, it's just amazing. I just, <laughs> I just had to stop. I'm just, you know, the energy. Yeah. It's just crazy because that's the one thing, the environment stronger than, and I just want you to explain that. So thank you for bringing that. <laughs> I tell you, like you were reading my mind, Rhonda. See, I know we're on the same length, Robin. Right, right. Environment. Okay. One of the easiest ways for me to explain environment is let's take, for example, uh, you're a person who, let's say you're a smoker. And, you know, once upon a time, I think I smoked for a period of time in my life. Smoking can become a very addictive habit, right? Now, if you think about it, where do you smoke? You're probably around your peers. You're in groups uh, at the bars. Well, it used to, you could smoke at the bars. And you had certain triggers, you know? Maybe if you had a drink, you wanted to light up. Maybe if you had a certain food, you wanted to light up. If you were in a certain group, you wanted to light up. These are all parts of our environment. So many times to quit smoking, we go, oh, I'm going to stop cold turkey. But what happens is we're still in that same environment. We still hang out with the same group of people who are heavy smokers. So what do you want to do? You want to look at them and you want to be part of the group because we want to be accepted. So we start smoking again. So your environment is so much stronger than your own personal willpower. Take, for example, uh, a teenager. Okay. Not that I've experienced this in any way either. <laughs> <laughs> but teenagers who perhaps are going on the wrong direction, on that wrong path, hanging out with the wrong people, 
Uh, and again, the whole snowball effect. Now, deep inside, this particular kid, young adult, knows that, man, this is just the wrong way. I, I really, I want to change. I don't really want to continue going down this path. But until that environment, until those peers are removed from the environment, it is so difficult for you to go in a different direction because it's like a magnet, you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's a whole other topic that we can talk about is <laughs> the children. And, and it's, you know, it's... And this is some of the things I speak about because there's so much bullying mm -hmm. in the schools and, and that leads to suicide. Mm -hmm. Tragic. And, and But it, it goes back to what you're saying about the environment and that peer pressure. And it's just a really, really tough time for kids nowadays, you know? Yes. Very difficult. But, but, it, but for, for us as adults even, we, we can think about the environment that we're in. So I was working with a client the other day and she said to me, you know, I just don't want to be around people that have a lot of drama in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, this is a very good step because you are really in those stages of wanting to transform your life. So basically her environment was these people, mm -hmm. right? Right. They're they and, and, and so she has to make choices, you know, it's like we sometimes we're kind of stuck in our environment at work, but we can choose how we respond. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good, that's a really good point. Again, that's another thing that we could probably talk another half hour on <laughs> reaction versus response. Right. 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 <laughs> uh, so those are the kind of the ease about uh, the dream system. Uh, then the A the, the main one I like to talk about is the accountability because honestly accountability goes into a couple of different forms and one of my favorite is the form of speaking and being accountable to your own words all right so it's a little bit different the responsibility and I'll give you a good example uh, there was a situation recently I was in and we I had a conversation with somebody and we agreed the benefits of transporting my horse to a facility was for a particular uh, reason. So we agreed on that. What, what was lacking was the follow through, her being accountable to what she said she would do. Okay. So for example, if, I, for, you know, let's look at the business perspective, right? Um, or, you know what, let's do the business right quick. So business perspective, when you work with a customer or a client, be cautious about what you promise that you'll do for them, what you can do for them, okay? If you can't or won't, don't say it, okay? Be accountable to yourself. If I say I'm going to do something, do it, right? Don't go back to the try, yeah. wishing, wanting, trying. Be accountable to what you said. Accountability partners are key, especially as you're making those choices and working on that transformation. You, it's a good idea to have an accountability partner. So when you speak the words, be accountable to what you said and have your partner help you stay accountable. Yes. So that's, a, that's a quick A. Yeah, no, that's, that's great, Rhonda. And when you, when you first began speaking of that, it reminded me of Don Miguel Ruiz, Ruiz's book, The Four Agreements. Mm -hmm. One of them is be impeccable, be impeccable with your words. Right. So true. And you know, it's, I, I totally agree with that. Our words are really creating, in a sense, our reality and how we're forming our world, right? Right. It's important, yes, someone should hold us accountable because if it doesn't happen, then people just continue to do and say sometimes the wrong things. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the words that we're using, it's interesting. Uh, just recently, I started teaching a communication course class, and it's really geared for young adults because this is part of what's almost missing. You know, it's learning how to go into the world and speak your words, be accountable, do what you say, say what you mean, okay? <laughs> and we, we have to teach them how to do that. So 
again, that's a whole nother topic that we could talk about for quite a while. Oh, sure, sure. And this is, I'm, I'm kind of interested. It's a communication course for, for children. You're kind of going out. Yeah, I, I'm on another platform. Um, and we have uh, something for our next generation, our, our younger kids. And we have mentors uh, like myself who have little modules that we teach so that they can learn life skills and business skills and entrepreneurial skills. And we want them to just take, you know, little bits and pieces. And I've been putting them together uh, in my library on my YouTube channel. So, you know, if anybody's really interested, I'd be happy to maybe share some of them with you. But they're just little, they're tidbits about things that we might not really be thinking about or be, be being aware of. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for informing us of that. That's a very that's very important. The the communication with the younger people because everyone's attached to their iPhones, so we're losing the art of communication, right? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Exactly. So, so would you like to would you like to know the last letter? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, the last letter is really about mastering, and what do I mean by that? It's so important for us to master our emotions. Kind of going back to that reaction versus response. And in my boot camp, I actually take you through how to figure out what your emotions are. Most, do you realize that so many people, if you ask them, how are you feeling? They just have this automatic response going, good, great, sad, mad, piss. You know? <laughs> they, they have these basic things. Um, but when you, if you really talk to somebody and ask them about, so this event that just happened in your life, How's it making you feel? So many people can't even identify their feelings. And what's happening in, is we are emotion led because we're human beings, right? And when we can learn how to master our emotions, we are able to make those um, thoughtful responses so we don't have knee jerk reactions. And just like the other day, I had a situation where there was a Again, texting. I don't. I don't want. I do not recommend this at all when you're having a conversation. But this person insisted on having a texting conversation with me, and it was slightly misinterpreted with my intentions because the, she can't see my body language, my face, or my tonality, and you know she interpreted it one way. So when she responded in a text message, it took me back because I'm a very heartfelt person and my intentions are pure. But because I can, I've learned to master my emotions, I'm not going to have that knee-jerk response, right? I'm not going to go, well, I'm going to go, well. Mm -hmm. Sure. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Back. Back. Ooh, there's a feedback. There's a feedback. Are you getting that feedback? Are you getting right that now? feedback? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I keep hearing myself keep now. Hearing myself now. <laughs> Hang on. Let me just do one thing. Um, Okay, let's try that again. Okay, I'm still getting feedback. Well, we'll wrap it up with mastering your emotions so that you don't have that knee-jerk reaction. So you can thoughtfully think about the scenario, the situation, evaluate what's happening, have a perspective of where you're coming from, where the other person is coming from, and then make a thoughtful decision on how to respond to the situation. Yes. Well, that's that's great. And I... I don't know if you heard your feedback when you were speaking, but I couldn't hear it. And I think, I think it'll be fine, but it's probably a good time. You know, we could end, but I did want to tell you a, a little story I was thinking of when you were speaking because we got into the subject of the social media and the texting. And so my granddaughter, when I went to her house some time back, she, her, her mom, my daughter was having a dinner party and she, my granddaughter had made a cute little box and she wrote on the top four cell phones. And when we entered the house, she made us put our cell phones into the box. And so therefore we could all be present. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just so important because we just read, we always have them with us and we rely on those too much. And, and that could cause those knee jerk reactions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I'm so, I, I love Lori because I have something very similar. My daughter 
had invited a friend over to our water house, which is a beautiful place that we have learned to disconnect. I don't turn on my cell phone. I don't take my computer. I sit there and look at the water and the sunsets. Well, periodically, she would bring a friend over. And my daughter locked their phones in our closet because she wanted to be present. She wanted her friend to be present. And I have to tell you, that was a really difficult thing. Her friend got really annoyed at first. And then I had to, you know, try to speak to her and say, hey, you know, this is a beautiful place. Let's go outside and play. Let's go in the water. Let's swim. Let's do this or let's do that. And the service here isn't very good anyway. And you can watch your videos anytime, right? So we have to actually teach and train our youth that there is something besides this box in front of us. Yes. So I love that. Yeah. See, you know, here's, here's who I, I love, why I love working with women, because women are the primary givers in the home, right? And when we, we are the primary um, child rearers, if you will, and children, as, as you know, we learn from uh, mirroring, right? Our parents and our uh, people in our home. So when I can work with I women, work with particularly women. mompreneurs, the women who are women working who are a business working. from home, raising their children, inevitably what I'm doing is having a ripple effect on the next generation mm -hmm. because the kids are watching mom get control. They're watching mom watch their communication. Mom is getting better about responding versus reacting, right? Mom is stepping outside the box. So the children are actually watching, you know, more is caught than taught. <laughs> yes, that's, that's absolutely right. And so it's so great because, you know, in a sense, it's as if life directions were, you know, it's the ripple effect of us kind of training and teaching and it's helping our children take the right life direction. Nick, I just came up with that. <laughs> it's, but it's, yeah, it's thank great. you. <laughs> Gave me goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's true though, and and I liked what you said, Rhonda, about you know when we can do these things that are are helpful, moving someone in the right direction, it is a ripple effect, you know, and it and it does make a difference if we can begin to make a difference, and and I think that every mom should do what you did. <laughs> Take them to the lake. Take away the bones. <laughs> it's, you know, my, my child, although she's very technology, she's pretty technology savvy. She goes to school from home. Uh, I have to give her a lot of credit because she's not one that hangs out on the phone all day. And, uh, you know, maybe a little bit on her downtime. But she's a kid who goes outside. She finds something to do. And I really encourage that. Yes. No, it, and it makes a difference because we'll have better social skills, yeah. better interaction, interaction with one another. And like you said, I love that. It's, you know, those knee jerk reactions, they're interpreted so differently on the phone, you know, but when you do face to face and you're in the presence of someone and you have the energy and you're totally present, mm -hmm. it makes a difference. Yes. So yeah. Well, so anyway, we, I think um, the audience, they got a lot of really, really good nuggets from you, Rhonda. Before, before we end, is there anything else you'd like to leave with them that you thought you missed or are you comfortable? Well, I just well, I life director, which is just the beginning. You know, check out the other papers, check out some of our boot camps and get in touch with any of us, really, whether it be through uh, TTV here uh, I believe in my heart, any of us would really be willing to, you know, have a, a short conversation. I know for myself, I offer chaos to clarity conversations because I really want to work with people who feel challenged because honestly, I know that I'm not the fit for everybody. So if I have a conversation, my goal is to help leave you in a better place than where you were. And if my company and my business can help you, great. If it's a good match. However, since I know many other um, of our teachers on the platform, I might say, you know what? Robin might be a good person for you to work with. So I really encourage people to get in touch with all of us.
Thank you. Oop, we just kind of, there we go, kind of faded. But thank you. Thank you, Rhonda, for taking time out of your day because I know you have a very busy schedule and we really, really appreciate your time with us. And I wish you all the best and all the success as for all of us as well. So thank you. And till we meet again. Okay. Thanks for your time. Okay. Bye for now.